Welcome to the Crit House. I am Jeff Larson. Um, here on the Crit House, we are going to uh, review photography, um, but not just individual images. We're going to review a body of work or a project from photographers, and we're going to have a couple of experts come in and have a discussion about that uh, about that body of work. And uh, hopefully, it's all with the goal to shine some light on the process, so that some some people like me, who are sort of amateur photographers, have a better understanding of what uh, what this review process is like and what it looks like. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. And today we have our two expert reviewers, Ellen Friedlander, who is a, a Los Angeles-based uh, photographer. She does street and documentary photography, uh, portrait work, as well as landscape. And uh, if I understand correctly, you're now starting to be a curator as well. Is that right, Ellen? I have been given that opportunity and it's quite fun. Nice, congratulations. Also with us is uh, Derek Fassbender who is based in New York City. He is a street photographer and an amazing one. And he is also the, a host of the b &H Photo Event Space, uh, which I have spent a lot of time watching. So Derek, welcome to the Crit House. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it'll be fun. And our photographer today is Judith Donath, who is based uh, in Boston, and she does generally street photography, or I, I suppose we can call it documentary yes. too. I'll let you describe that for yourself. But uh, she is an author, and formerly she was on the faculty of the MIT Media Lab. So welcome, Judith. Thank you. This will be fun. This is a uh, perhaps the first episode of the Crit House, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation. So Judith, maybe you can uh, start us off by telling us a little bit about your project and what you're doing with it, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go away and we'll have a conversation and uh, give you some feedback. Okay, great. Um, well, this is, it's still kind of a project, very much information. I started this several months ago and I'm still feeling my way through what sort of things I'm looking for. Um, the basic idea is one of the things that had been very frustrating about doing street photography recently is that so many people you see are basically their attention is captured by their phones. And I think it was, um, I can't remember who's the photographer, um, Joel Meyerowitz, who said something about how, you know, the phone has ruined street photography that, you know, what you've really looked for in the past was how people interacted and looked at each other. And now they have no interest, seem to have no interest in each other. And I started in trying to think, okay, what if I start photographing deliberately people with phones? And a lot of what really interests me about that is this sense of that we're in a time that in a few years we'll look back with a certain degree of nostalgia because people will be as, their attention will be as absent, but it will no longer be visible. That between you know, smart glasses or contact lenses or different kinds of implants, people will be out in public, but their mind will be someplace else, but it will be a completely invisible piece. And the experience of being out in public will become much less legible. And so right now we're at this peculiar moment where people's attention is in a virtual space, but we, we can see the, a physical manifestation of that, but that's a very limited moment. So the idea I'm trying to capture here is both this ubiquity of people being drawn into like some invisible drama or whatever it is they're, they're after there. Um, and how this is just right now letting us see that happening. And we are soon not going to be able to. So, so that's Judith, the basic idea. So Judith, it's, it's a little bit like you, you, we have these phones in our hands right now all the time, but in mm -hmm. a few years, they're going to be gone. And this will be right. historically kind of an interesting thing in 10 or 20 years from now, because we won't have those phones in our hands all the time. Right. And we'll be as much around people who aren't particularly mentally present, but you won't be able to see that happening. And so this is that moment where you can see 
that that exists. So, so just the last question: How do you how do you think that this is this a magazine article? Is this a book? Is this a show? What are you sort of thinking about for what it looks will end up being? Um, I, I mean, I would like to do it as a show, and I mean, it seems to me like a show and a book go together fairly well. Um, you know, if I do it, if I was going to do it as a book, I mean, I, I write a lot about technology and society. Um, and so I could, part of it is, you know, if I think that there is a interesting enough short text to go with it, that might make the most sense. Okay. Um, but I really like the scale of physical shows and that in some ways it, it's almost a contrast because the physical show is that shared space where everyone's looking at the same thing. And the content here is the exact opposite of that. Perfect. I appreciate the summary. Okay. So here's what we'll do. We'll have you go on mute for a little bit and um, we will mm -hmm. enter into the discussion with Derek and Ellen. Um, so Derek and Ellen, now, now that you've heard a little bit about what Judith has told you and you've seen the images right, that I ran through pretty quickly, I can go back through them if you want. Um, tell us what you think. I think we go back through them. I think we should look at them again. Okay. Um, so color images. Well, it's very complex what you're trying, what, what Judith is trying to do, because when we look at photographs, straight at photographs, that's all we know. Right. So the idea that she's trying to get across, which is very interesting that we could potentially have like in our eyes, the, the glasses or our cell phones are communicating and no one will know that doesn't necessarily. It's that idea that she's going after historically that this is going to be gone right now the viewer would have a hard time making that leap even historically to you'd have would there i feel like there needs to be words there needs to be some sort of description a little bit more going on for us to the viewer to get that idea what do you think yeah i, I agree with that i mean i think even in a project like this when you look at it without the words you say okay people on their phones but you don't really dive deeper into that. So I think Ellen brings brings up a great point that you can give the the idea a little push, but you need to give it more with that with the the written background of where you're trying to take it to um, in the future. So I, I totally agree with that. The first thing that jumps out to me about um, the series as a whole is just from an aesthetic perspective. I would love to see this in in black and white. I think monochrome would serve this beautifully. And I say it for this reason, that color can be so distracting if it's not colored that's cohesive, if it's not colors that are aesthetically pleasing or have a certain rhythm to them. And I feel like the color doesn't add enough for me here. There's When, when we looked at everything as a grid, and you see kind of like this yellow blue tone to a lot of the images, it made me think there might be something there that would say, okay, it could lend something in color. And then I started thinking about from a symbolic nature of this blue screen, right? We, we were, one of the things we tie to phones is the blue screen and, and the effect that the, looking at this blue screen does to us. But I'm also a purist and I like to keep things natural. And I, you know, first I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe you, you shoot with a white bounce that gives it a little bit more of a blue hue or you color grade it a little differently, but really what it comes down to is just the content of it and really letting people focus on taking their eye away from everything else, except for what's going on in the frame. So I, I, I would love to see it monochrome. I think um, a lot of the images could be cropped down greatly so this image for example you really just need to see what's going on in the center of the frame I, I think some of the some of the what's going on on the peripherals doesn't really lend into the image and i think a tighter crop would bring that focus to greater detail on the actual heart of the series which is people on their phones 
Well, it's even like, this is, this is a beautiful photograph. I mean, just aesthetically, this is just color wise, palette wise, broken up the screen, the way that the frame is broken up. It has a lot of really lovely elements, but it's not telling me the story that she's trying to get across the message. I'm, I'm not really getting what she's trying to get at and that's really tricky it's almost like these are really beautiful street photography but to push it about technology and where technology is going and where us as a human race are going from today and 10 years from now that is kind of almost really targeting into like the phone and eyes and vacancy and going a lot more um, hardcore really um, pushing the viewer to realize that you know it's almost getting gritty these are these aren't gritty enough to tell us that the future is is not what it may seem right I mean I think she's getting to a really it's a wonderful idea it's really interesting but this, these are too pretty in a way so how does she do that so how would she how would she do to tell that story better what photographically, you know, um, does she need to get in closer? What, what's, uh, is there a change of subject in terms of like who she's shooting? I, I think by getting closer, you know, Ellen, you, you talked about, uh, or uh, was it, I'm sorry, Judith, you said what uh, Joel Myrowitz said about, um, you know, the what phones have robbed us of that interaction, that human element. I think something that would make this project completely dynamic and turn it on its head would be to take a book out of that the older generation of street photographers and get close, right. shoot wide, but get close. And, and I don't want to say violate their space, but violate their space and get make these more intimate and less as a passerby or a from a voyeuristic perspective, but really get up i think one of the most interesting facets of street photography is even without interaction without any verbal communication walking up into somebody's space raising your camera shooting with intent looking at them letting them know that you're taking a photo of them and capturing that response to that and i think that's the beauty and i think that's what joel kind of referred to is that what we're what we're losing in this day and age and people are so wrapped up and involved in their phones that you might have people that just completely walk by and you know what that tells a story and the way that people respond tells a story so i think getting closer getting into their space might help bring this across i i totally resonate with what ellen said about phone you know phones are so blah blah, blah now we all have them if it was okay we're taking photos of people that are still using flip phones, the story kind of tells itself, but there needs to be some other element that takes it to another level. And I think that what I see here is a great idea in its infancy that really needs to be developed out and maybe spending more time and being more deliberate and looking for opportunities where there might be a sign or a billboard or words in the frame that create a ironic dynamic or something that adds to the pot. Well, I'm gonna go out on a real left field here because I'm all about pushing photography and even street photography a little bit is that you could even, she could cut them out and she could play with like the different figures and then put them all together and have like, do it in Photoshop or layer them physically, but also changing the angle, getting down under somebody who's just vacant on their phone, you know, vac or peering over somebody who is vacant looking down into the phone. It's about where we are today in our generation. It's just like people are just like, they're just existing, they're on their phone, they can't think without knowing that somebody's going to dial them. That kind of need that that I don't feel that urgency. So we almost want to have an urgency felt. And then when we go into this other technological advancements that are coming, the we'll feel that. We'll feel a shift. So there's like we need a little edginess 
something like that. So when I, when I started coming back into photography, uh, seriously, again, I had, um, I had done a lot of uh, photography on Boston Common using a cell phone, which allows you to get incredibly co- close to people without them knowing it because everybody has a cell phone and they're all on cell phones. They don't look at them. I want, I wonder if, if, if she were able to, a, a way to get close enough would be just come in with a cell phone. People don't see it. So let's, uh, let's, let's bring Judith in. Judith, you can un- unmute. Um, yeah. Um, I guess the one thing I want to say is I think maybe the scenario I sketched out about the future was a little bit distracting because it was, it's not so much that I expect people to guess that from looking at this, it was a little bit more the background of why I think this is a really interesting image. That not this one in particular, but why the, the cell phones are interesting because they're we don't rec- they're so common now, and I think we don't recognize how temporary they are. But um, I think it it's not the sole point of it. It is, I think, a little bit more about that feeling of, of isolation. Um, I guess one question about sort of the color and, and black and white um, is if, if I was to continue doing this in color, um, what do, can you tell me a little bit more what you were, can go on a little bit more about the idea of a um, cohesive palette so just simply from a color perspective, where I think we're naturally drawn to cohesive palettes. Mm-hmm. There's a reason why they're so popular, why you know movies are graded in a cohesive way. It brings your eye in and it really, what it does is it's pleasing to the eye, but it also takes color out of the equation. Your eye, shouldn't be drawn so on this image right here my eye keeps being drawn to the red mask Mm -hmm. and i don't want my eye to be drawn to the red mask because what's actually most interesting it's funny that we're paused on this picture here right because when i was thinking about that blue glow this is the picture that i had in mind if you look at both both of their jackets of the Mm -hmm. women who are sitting down you see that blue that blue glow and that blue glow is super symbolic Mm-hmm. when, well, when so, talking about phones. So Derek, let me just ask you. So you talked about a cohesive palette. It doesn't necessarily have to be a cohesive palette as much as it is something that's cohesive stylistically. I mean, like Alex Webb, who has an amazing, you know, the, his palette's all over the place, but there's a, there's a consistency stylistically to his work, even though the palette isn't necessarily the same. Yes, that's a, that's a great point. That's a great point, and probably yeah. a much better way, or definitely a much better way to uh, to word it. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just feel like, yeah, there's it, it's disjointed in that regard, where it looks like a hodgepodge of images, and I want it to look like one mm-hmm. body of work. This is a good good way to look at it as the grid. You can see the your your color palette as it hangs together. It's not like one color palette, mm-hmm. and so if you were to take, let's say the top three, those are muted, the mm-hmm. three, and that you could say, and then if you go to the bottom, the second from the bottom row, the, the, the they're all in that line kind of mm-hmm. hidden the walls, that could kind of fit up there. You could kind of put some of them and they would kind of fit as a color palette. And then when a viewer is looking at them all, it takes, that element out and focus your mm-hmm. eye on what you're trying to really your message. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. yes. So Judith, any final questions or comments that you have about uh, the dis- quick discussions we had? Um, do you have, I just, do you have any, um, I guess any sense of, are there any here that you would say particularly seem to be moving in the direction you would be interested in? I get partly what, what you'd want to see moving more in that direction. And I guess the other issue I had, what's been helpful for this is um, at some level, I also thought like just pictures of people on cell phones, all the same would be boring. But so what I'm also gathering is that 
I need to figure out what the right set of common visual themes are to hold it together without being monotonous, but still more cohesively. No, I, I mean, honestly, you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be the same because then if it's always the, the you know, the brick house, right. the brick house, the brick house, right? Then, right? It's, it's really more about, you, you've got a great idea, okay? Don't take what we've said and say you don't have a great idea. I love what you're talking about, how this is historical and that someday we're going to be totally in another realm and you're already starting there. That's really fabulous. So don't, don't go <laughs> don't go negative on the idea. The idea is fabulous. Where you are is that you're this the street photography just there's so much of it. And so now as street photographers, we really have to find our own voices. So you're just at the tipping point of saying, oh, I got a great idea. Now it's about like just keep going out there and getting closer and make lots of bad photographs. Eventually they're not bad. I mean, you may make a whole host of photographs and you think, oh God, that was just a waste of time. But then find out that three years from now, there was a gem in there that mm -hmm. puts your whole project into perspective. And that's, that's the thing. So what we've just said is get a little closer mm -hmm. about turning some of them in black and white and see what you think. Um, don't be afraid to change your angles about how you're shooting for your thought about technology changing so rapidly, because it is, and you've got a really great idea. You've just got to make it really clear to your viewer. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I agree. That's the idea summary. is there, it's the, the, edge, the execution. So you have the idea and that's the important part because the, the execution, you can take your time on the execution. You can, you can work at this, this project and continue to build it out until you have what you want. I think the images that are strong to me, and I think that tell a wonderful story are images where you have number one layered images. I think layered images are just beautiful in street photography, mm -hmm. but the, the incorporating the element of having multiple people on their mm -hmm. phones, a single person on their phone, to be honest, it's boring to me. Everybody's on their phone. Why am I looking at that? you know, each, each image should be a standalone image it should, and it should also fit into the series. So I think the, in the way you diversify that, so you don't get sucked into, okay, brick house, brick house, brick house is put yourself in different environments. Now that you see, okay, it's not just these people on this block and this neighborhood all on their phone. I can go here and everybody's on their phone or, Hey, I went to Chuck E. Cheese and guess what? all the parents are on their phones. And so yeah. I think if you find different scenarios and, a, and see that it's everywhere. That's a good thought. I mean, cause these are all sort of shot in the streets of Boston, right? If you have things that are more suburban and rural and uh, uh, on boats in the ocean where pe cause people are on the phones everywhere. Um, I think that's a good, that's a good final thought. I, I thank you for mm -hmm. that. So um, Judith, I, I hope that uh, that helps you out. Um, it was super helpful. Thank you. Excellent. Super. Um, well, I want to thank really you all for, for joining us here. Um, and here's some information about today's reviewer, Ellen El Reviewers. Ellen Friedlander is, again, she's in Los Angeles. You can see her work at ellenfriedlanderphotography.com. And she is on Instagram as well at mfphoto59. And uh, Derek Fassbender is at likeamachine.com like a machine or at like a machine on Instagram as well. What is the story behind that, Derek? Like a machine. It's a, it's a long story. <laughs> okay. One, one <laughs> on a short show. Another, <laughs> another show then. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, today's uh, photographer, Judith Donath is on uh, Instagram as well at Judith Donath and you can find her work there. Uh, it's all good stuff. Um, so thank you for joining us here on what we think is the first episode of the Crit House. Um, you can, uh, if you are interested in showing your work on the Crit House and having uh, a review of your material, you can reach us at thecrithouse.com.